Welcome to the Warren Cycling Podcast. My name is Dean Warren. I'm in Sarasota, Florida today. And I'm Randy Warren, and I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, it's uh, April 2nd, 2024. It's our uh, 350th podcast. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's, it's, eight, it's, eight, it's 80 some degrees here in Asheville today. Wow. Yesterday. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah We're supposed to be high of 48, though, on Thursday. Yeah, it's going to cool down here this weekend, too. But yeah, it was well into the... I don't even think it was quite that warm here, though. Maybe up to 85-ish, but the sun's always strong. It was pretty cloudy. I went out for a ride, and it was only in the low 70s to start with. And, <laughs> but I was... Yeah, I left at about 8. I wanted to get out about 8 or before, but I think it was after 8.30 before I left. And then um, I wanted to do a little... Try to. Oh, it's going to be hard. I was videoing it. Decided to film it, and I rode south down to Minnesota Key, where Taylor and I. I rode the stretch that Taylor and I did on our second day of our Orlando to Key West bicycle tour back uh, several years ago when we did a ten-day bike tour down to Key West. So, and it's a good wind out of the south. But I brought my drone because I wanted to try to get drone footage. But I wasn't sure how I'd do it by myself because. It's hard to drive drive the drone and to ride at the same time. Oh, and I've got ahead of my a thing that some, follows. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. I don't have that feature. But it, right? it only goes like up to 15 miles an hour, so you have to go kind of slow, I think. So. Yeah. So yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I had you know over a four hour ride, and usually I'm pretty wiped out after that. But I had a lot of things I needed to get done today, so I, I couldn't even think about being wiped out. So I was thinking about, man, you you do all kinds of long hard rides. How do you recover to get everything done that you need to do? That's crazy. You're four years older than I am, so. Yeah, I don't sleep much, and I, yeah, just you just have to. You do just it. plow through. <laughs> you don't have a choice. I I am sleeping, trying to sleep more though. I, I, I think it is starting to catch up a little bit. Like the so I just got back from California, and it wasn't right, this warm there. It was 70s the first couple of days, and then 60s after that. But but um That's yeah I, weather. I yeah it was you know I did everything I had to do for camp. I tried to prepare. So I wouldn't have a lot of other things to do because yeah, it's, I think as we get a little older, it's a little harder for me to stay up late with the, you know, eight days of riding one rest day in there. It's a short ride, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We do like 550 miles, 35,000 feet of climbing in eight days. That's pretty good, pretty good riding. And, and I came in about a month behind in my training from normal. So I definitely had was slower in a lot of things. My the first two days I was about as fast as usual, and then after that I, I wasn't as fast as I. Are you normally. using a whoop? Do you wear a whoop? Yeah, but I'm in the red all the time. So. Yeah, I was gonna say, what what is it telling you after a couple of days of that camp? I mean, wow. I'm yeah. I in my annual report last year from whoop, it said I was like in the one percent of people who get the least amount of sleep or something like that, and one percent of people who work the hardest. So my my stress was. As high as one, you know, in the top one percent, and my lack of sleep was in the thing. So yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing things right. <laughs> well, you're still winning races and at the top of your category for your age group. So yeah. I know, we'll see. I was only third at the first gravel race, and I've got another gravel race this Saturday, and I've a hurt Achilles too. So, um, wow. and a camp starts a week from what's tomorrow, a week from tomorrow. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, hope, hopefully your Achilles will hold out for you. And yes. It's probably more important to keep it good for the camp than the race, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. This is also a race that favors me too. It's got a ton of climbing, so it should be good to do. Gravel race. Is it? Is it local? Pretty local. Hot springs. So yeah, just hour and a half, hour drive away, something like that. It's pretty pretty close. North yeah. Carolina. North Carolina. A lot of these races are in South Carolina, but this is yeah, the North Carolina one. You could yeah. drive an hour and be in three different states, couldn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Tennessee, yeah. Georgia, South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I I did a three states ride where I went up to Tennessee, then down to South Carolina, and then back. Which because in in Chicago we have a right. I was just ride. thinking about you used to do yeah. that three state ride from Chicago. So I did that I, in in honor of that during COVID times. I think I did the three states ride here, which was definitely way more climbing than there and a little bit longer, maybe riding time, but not that bad. So like 150 miles, maybe. Is that right? That's yeah. a lot of riding. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Well, enough so, about us. So, huh? Well, yeah, I know. I was thinking. So I have a little Achilles injury, and I and I yeah. just push through it and I do. But the guy behind me, he was sick at the end of the UAE tour. Then he was sick at um, Terry Nice, right? A little bit. Well, and uh, something was it, off. Yeah. So he pushed through those a little bit, but then yeah. I think he missed one race. And now apparently he's feeling well. And last last week, right? He, he was crushing the Miguel in the rain race. That was Saturday. That was Saturday. or Friday, Saturday, 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 Saturday because it was uh, two days before the Itulia Basque Country start, where he's racing. But I, I think Juan Ayuso is probably their number one rider yes. at that race, the one you, that they'll be racing for. Although Isaac Toro Del Toro took the bonus sprint today, so yeah, yeah, and he's also was what fourth or fifth in the time trial or something, wasn't he? Just Del Toro, he was pretty pretty high up there, so. Mm. I don't remember. Yeah, McNulty but, was but, around 13th, I think. A little further back, yeah, yeah. And I and and I and I saw like Sepkus didn't even try yesterday or today, so I think he's saving himself for support for Vindigo on the climbs. But but even before we do that, though, we yeah, yeah, we're getting yeah, we're getting way ahead of ourselves, right? right? Yeah, yeah, Catalonia. You were at you were at the one of the stages of the Tour de Catalonia, the last stage, the final stage in Barcelona, where they do a circuit, Montjuic um, circuit around. The beautiful area in Barcelona, where the, I think so, the Olympics were held. The Olympic stadiums up on top of that hill. There's like a, a fortress and pretty pretty good climb, fast downhills, and there was a little bit of threat of rain in the morning, which they hadn't expected. Which I thought, man, last time I was Barcelona, they weren't expecting that storm that came in at the beginning for the individual or for the team time trial at at the uh, start of the Volta a España. So I thought, oh, what's going on with it, with, with this weather? But uh, and and I talked to a photographer later on, and he and I hadn't heard, but he said, yeah, that they were considering just reducing to maybe one circuit around Montreal. I thought, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that's what I want to be there to see. Like you know, it's six times they come around, and and um, it was kind of funny. I was up at the top talking to. He was an English speaker. He's from the UK, but he's based in um, the Pyrenees. So he's at the to the best country, but uh, he was he was telling me a little about some things that I didn't hear about as far as photographers and how it works getting on motos. And he was hoping to get a ride back down, but he couldn't get in contact with a he couldn't get someone. And then a car had stopped that maybe he could get with them when they came around, but they didn't come around again because they limit the vehicles on that circuit. So. He had to decide after three laps to go down to get make sure to get down there for the finish because it's, uh, it's at least a mile and a half, maybe two miles to get back down on the course, All, mostly downhill. So I went with him. I was following him, and it goes downhill, but there's a slight uphill part. You know, the the, the other photographer was good on the downhill, but with a slight rise, I, I dropped him. <laughs> so <laughs> we joked about it at the finish. Like he made it to the finish in time too. For we got was we he, got. Was he a big guy? He's tall. Not. He didn't look like he. I mean, he's just a bigger guy, but he said he didn't ride that much. You so. you were on bikes or you were? No, no, we were walking. Oh. Yeah. Well, I wonder. But there's I crowds, like and I'm following him downhill because he was, you know, making a good. He was like a fullback, you know, the running back behind. Him. <laughs> and then we get to the a uh, slight uphill. It wasn't that much, and all of a sudden I I dropped him. I looked back. He's like further behind me. I was like, huh, I don't think I want to wait for him because I'm trying to get to the finish too. So, but. We both made it to the finish. Yeah, and uh, Teddy Pagacha, that uh, there's not a lot to say. I mean, just how dominant. I mean, it was, it was amazingly dominant. So, but before the stage, I was where the riders would come in for their sign-in, and one of the most more popular riders because he, he lives in pretty close to the same area, and he won the Vuelta a España last year, and he speaks Spanish. Is, is Sepp Kuss for Visma Lisa bike. And although it seemed like early on the season, I, he was finishing not too far off, like in that Camino. Oh, he was fighting state. for... Yeah. yeah, it was like, like a better shape than he usually... He's usually not that... Seems like he's that high, you know, strong. And or then, it's, not, it's not a priority to try and do that well. But yeah. He, he seemed like he was and kind of pushing for... Yeah. Shifting his focus maybe now as a Voltus... Uh, the grand tour winner that he's yeah <laughs> they, they needs to be doing better and so they gave him the chance yeah i guess to lead at catalonia but uh, i don't think anybody as close could be close to teddy's um level that he was showing so but anyway i talked to sep 
um, just briefly, I mean, I, I've talked to him enough and seen him enough, and so it's not, you know, we're, we just kind of joke a little bit, <laughs> and they, you know, not a real. Well, this is what we we said. That's already that's already had to say. <laughs> hey, how are you doing with all the attention? Are you okay? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nobody's yeah. hanging on your no, door. They don't no. come up to Andorra to look for you. No, no, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yeah, yet. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. enjoy it, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah especially here. All the people. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. When you know all the roads, it's always nice. Yeah. 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 And today, yeah. hopefully, it stays dry. Yeah, I think it should be good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's blowing, uh, blowing north. So, yeah. yeah. You're going to mix it up again today. Well, we'll see. Yeah, today's not my favorite day. Today's always. Uh, if, if I, I, I think today I've never made it into the in, in the first group. I'm always uh, surviving today. Yeah. What's, what's your goal then today? You gonna make the first just to survive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We'll see though. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Have fun. Thanks. Thanks. Good, but you build up is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah really good. Yeah, good. feeling this, good. Really and, uh, not this high level this early in the year. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. For me, it's already uh, already good. So yeah. yeah. But you're gonna be missing when the Giro starts. That you're not doing a grand tour, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm doing all of them. Yeah, I need a few to uh, to get in shape. <laughs> all right. Hey, good to see you. Well, we just joked around how he was, you know, say he's never finished, and with the front group uh, that circuit, it's not his best day, and he was pretty close <laughs> this year, just just off a little bit. So, but he was putting his team like on some of the stages on the front where it looked like, I mean, they were just helping Pagacha really because he, they didn't have to ride then. <laughs> like that, like he was going to, like he was feeling good. He was going to be able to do something, but um, no, nah, I, I mean, he was still pretty good, but, but yeah, he's got a lot of fans. It was fun to watch him like with all the people wanting to get autographs and, all the interviews he was doing in Spanish before I talked to him. So he seemed in a good mood. He was happy afterwards. His wife was there and, and he got to drive the, he was driving, he said, well, I'm driving back to home. And and it was a team car he had. So I was like, well, he gets to take the team car home. So sometimes maybe. Yeah. yeah I, I guess so. I don't know. It's not very incognito that we, no. Yeah. Well, I remember I just was in San Luis Obispo and the owner of High Road was there. And so, We'd see high road vehicles just randomly around there, you know, back in the, in the day. So, so yeah, I think they just when they're not being used for something else, they maybe let people use them. So, yeah, maybe he's, he drove it to the Basque Country tour. Then it wasn't to get the car back. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, Sepp's big goals still probably this year are to support Vinus, um, Jonas Vingegaard Hansen at the tour and then be the um, number one rider wearing the number one at the Vuelta. Right. Defend his, so, his yeah, title. Yeah. So he's not doing the Giro. So last year he did all three. Yeah. Yeah. I joked to him about him not, not going to start the Giro. Like he's not going to know what to do with not doing another grand tour. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I need a couple of them to get going. <laughs> so, yeah. See how he does the one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then um, also, which uh, from his team came the stage winner today at Sulia Basque Country from um, Decathlon Azure Le Mondial. Talked to our Michigan rider, Larry Warbass. Yeah. So, yeah, check, checked in with him how he's doing this year so far. Hey, with Larry Warbass here, get the new kid on. I'm liking it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I like it too. It looks okay. good. It's a little bit harder to pick out in the Peloton, but. Uh... Uh, but yeah, it looks good, so we're happy with it. Yeah, well, last day of Catalonia, um, man, how do you race against somebody that's always a threat to go up the road or win every stage like <laughs> I gotcha? I mean, what? I mean, you do your own race and you don't really think too much about what he's doing, so, I mean, you know, there's not much we can do, you know, we can try for the brakes, we can, you know, try our hand, but, uh, yeah, in the end, he's superior to everyone, so, so yeah, we, we don't really... You know, he's not necessarily a part of the our tactics, you know. So how's the shape coming for you? Yeah, good. Uh, I've been feeling pretty good this year, so so that's good. And then uh, this is my last race for a bit. Go to altitude and then uh, tour the Alps and Giro. So should be good. Alps and Giro. Do you yeah. go to altitude at Taita? No, we're going to Etna. Etna? So Yeah, okay. so it should be yeah. cool. 
you know, yeah. they're... I've yeah. never been there for altitude, no? so... so yeah. All right. So it should That's be good. good. Yeah, yeah, because when you go to altitude, it can be kind of boring maybe if you're not yeah. in a place that's much going on or yeah but i mean it's okay it's nice to like just focus on training and uh yeah getting to be your best <laughs> yeah do you feel you've had good success with altitude yeah i've had you? i've had really good success yeah i really like going to altitude so yeah it should be nice uh, we're going with four guys from the team so it should okay. be perfect all right yeah thanks sweet all right okay yeah larry um Seems to be excited about going to altitude. It must be there now, getting ready for the Tour of the Alps, which I think is coming up mid 15th ish of April to the 19th. They're racing a lot in um, Austria and Italian Alps. So I have a trip to Milan on the 16th. I was trying to figure out how far it would be to get to the stage, and it doesn't look like it'd be that easy to get to. I've never, I've never seen a stage of the Tour de Alps, which it's only been called the Tour de Alps in the recent years. Can you remember what it was called before the Tour de Alps? No. Good question. Yeah. I was, look, I was looking to see what, what the dates were. I mean, the pro cycling stats has next races, but they're, you know, a gazillion happen in the next couple of yeah. days. Yeah. And then no. next World Tour races, and it's not a World Tour race apparently. For stage race? A Roman D might be then. Romandy is next world 23rd. tour. Yeah. Yeah. This is right bef- bef- before then. So, yeah, yeah there's a lot of climbing. Then, so, yeah. A lot of climbing. So, yes, yeah, so we'll see how uh, Larry's doing in, the, in those climbs after being at altitude and Etna. And I think this may be a good segue because I've had, I've got a little different takes. Um, the Big Grass Race course, not the Tsuli Bass Country, not the GP and Miguel Indurain that was so much fun to watch because Brandon McNulty just, wow, he he took a flyer and got caught and passed on that last steep climb, but then dug in and it was wet downhill and was able to catch up with Fang Hills and then, then beat him in the sprint, which yeah. you have behind you. That was, that was so much fun to watch live. You know, some of the races, you know, you, you see the results and you go back and watch, but to not, you know, and the way he won was not what you'd expect. And so it was a big surprise. And, and that was, I was on the airplane, and I I gave a little fist bump. You know, <laughs> when he went, I thought, well, the person next to me probably went, what, what's he excited about? So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was good too because you said something about you watched the finish of it, and I was busy, so I didn't, was I didn't have a chance to see it. And then, so I then I, then I, I subscribed to Flow Bikes now, so I was able to go back and see the replay. And the replays play well. The live is not working very well with my internet provider apparently but yeah and then i so i didn't know what happened you know and then i i, when I turned it on i think maybe they just had the, the finish like the last 8k or something like that so he was attacking that was and, mostly yeah. excitement there yeah yeah it was great yeah 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 hey, i clipped off solo which he's done before and he's such a great time tell so you think all right you know you should be able to get this one but then that steep climb just was a bit too much so yeah but what I, I wanted to start talking about, which we haven't mentioned the, the Ronde for Flandern yet, the Tour of Flanders is the, ne- the second monument on the schedule, but it, actually it was a lot of suspense because the Dwarves Tour of Flandern before the, oh, the, the weekday race, you know, just... That was the most decisive part of the <laughs> Flanders was Wednesday before, yeah. Yeah, because of the crash that took out Walt Van Aert and Alex Kirsch and Jasper Stuyven, big players Matt, that Matt could Peterson really went down too, and right? Matt Peterson, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's amazing. Matt Peterson goes down... You know, everyone follows different ways. So Peterson falls down. He's, he's injured, but he could still race and seemingly was in pretty good um, shape. Well, he's been, at, a, yeah, he's been in really good fitness. But oh, it seemed super like he, high fitness. It seemed like he raced, though, differently because of maybe he was injured some. I, I guess so, but it, he was still the third one, the the next you know best guy, or only third one to climb up the Kopenberg and make it up. He was, and that's close enough towards the finish where we, after wasting all the energy that he wasted. So, but um, yeah, and, and the and the bittersweetness of the <laughs> Tours of Flandern was that Matteo Jorgensen, huge win for him, that sealed his. Uh, what was super important for him too, because uh, he got got a spot on the Olympic team by winning that race. I th- which I thought think it was ironic maybe... that he didn't get it from Paris. I, 
I thought he read something that Perry Nice is when where he got it though. You know. He said he was reading the afterwards and it didn't it didn't clinch it. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So I mean, that was because a it was a, anyway. Yeah. yeah. World to race. There's rules about like if you're top so much in a world to right. race or yeah. So. I mean, and, and usually race. Americans don't, usually Americans don't need to worry about it because we're never never the chance yeah, to get yeah. the women's side once in a while. So yeah. So I know like I think when Corinne Rivera Corinne. won Flanders or something like that too. She um Corinne Lebecki now. Corinne Lebecki now. Yeah. Yeah. So she sure. that gave her an automatic spot in the Olympics. So it's crazy she yeah. won Flanders. I, I mean, know. she's, she's the not only she's American not, to win. Yeah, she's not been on that level for since then almost. But um, she's still a very solid racer, obviously, and in, in races as well. But but to win Flanders, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. So what I was thinking about, though, with the altitude camp and the, and the whole question has come up, I've listened to some other podcasts a little bit, not not much of a big question, but with Wout Van Aert being in the one of the best shapes he's been in ever because his huge goals are were Rona from Flanders and, and Perry Roubaix, monuments that, have eluded him so far and so he's some said a form of his life which i can't believe the form of his life he's very high level i guess could be yeah yeah but I mean, right but but getting to that level through altitude training does that not prepare you as well for the actual racing because you you might be missing the the jostling that you have to do the positioning Maybe even the, the different weather conditions. I don't. I don't know. It's 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 a lot different to be training just on your own, and to be in a pack racing in in a big race. So that he missed some of the races leading up, and then he does Doris de Flander. And well, he did uh, he did the other actually before that was it E three the one where he, he like tried to bunny hop from the gutter up, uh, oh, and then he slipped and. I didn't yeah. see that. Oh yeah. That's when he went down there, right when Matu Vanderpool was attacking at the front. Oh, and then, when Wout well, went down. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but 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 Matu Vanderpool didn't. He he didn't do hardly any racing though. So. I mean, this yeah, is, he did Milan San Remo though, but that was that was his first race back. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he did. He go to altitude too. He just tra trains in Spain, I think. I think altitude, I mean, so altitude training gives you more red blood cells. And so it gives it doesn't make you faster necessarily, but it gives you more endurance. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, you know, I mean, he's coming off of, Mateo's coming off of a big cross season. So he's jostled more than in cross races as he passes laps people. <laughs> yeah. And then it starts. Than, than most people are. So I think, I think you know, the, the, his level of comfort is probably pretty high in those kinds of things. And Wout, too, I mean, he raced cross, too. So I, I don't think he that as much. Not as much, yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't don't know. Know need, I don't know if they need, you know, if, it, if, you're, if you're the kind of rider who has trouble with positioning and... No, they're both highly skilled. Hospitals. Yeah. But do you, can you get a little rusty or be a little off edge if you're not doing it much? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, different people, different things. But, but yeah. what, the one thing that makes a difference is that you can't go as hard at altitude. You just can't because you know as much oxygen. So, you know, you can't stay there too long without, you know, you have to come into it with a lot of hard efforts in your body so that when you go there, you, you do mostly, you know, endurance at high level to build your red blood cells to be able to ride longer, harder at a higher level. But you can't, but you don't do, you don't go to altitude for hard efforts, you know. So even in the point of even people in Colorado Springs, when they would do hard efforts, they would have supplemental oxygen and do it on the trainer. So that they could work harder in their hard efforts, and then they do endurance rides, you know, at, without any supplemental oxygen. So you know, it's like, you know, it, it's altitude's a little bit of a tricky thing. And like Mads Peterson yeah. doesn't even like going; he doesn't do no, it. And, not at you know, all. So he's been in great shape. Yeah, I guess you know, Wow really focused and try to put everything into the, and he, he did all that he could. I mean, his team unfortunately has had a lot of crashes and illnesses too which put has put them on the back foot um mateo jorgensen looks like his move there has been a really good idea now before i was worried that he would have a hard time getting opportunities yeah. <laughs> so, right now. Yeah. yeah so he's had more than a share um 
I watched from 150k out. I was in Venice. I had Italian TV on, and so I got to see a lot. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't as exciting of a race as some of the other monuments maybe have been outside of Milan San Remo that just gets exciting at the end, where the racing wasn't quite on as early, and when it did start to heat up with around 100k to go, it wasn't very. It didn't look very promising, the groups that formed a little bit, but not so. And I and I was seeing how Matteo Jorgensen was really attentive and at the front, but it almost felt like, oh, he's, I can see him too much. Like that, I think he's in the wind too much. Like he's yeah. he's making. I mean, I, I heard he did some efforts before, earlier. I didn't. I, I watched it like from ADK. And and yeah, yeah, he did. He closed things that I thought. Well, if he's a team leader, why is he closing? Yeah. And is that that move that he needs to and. Why isn't he just like trying to conserve what he can and wait? But I guess what the strategy to try to beat a Vant- Matteo Vanderpool is to start attacking early and trying to isolate and cause his team to have to make extra efforts to wear themselves out where he won't have the help later on. But it's all, I mean, he, he is such an incredible racer. It's all, it's, and his yeah. team did phenomenal. I mean, Mads Peterson, when he went away, and he just stayed out. They were they were just like playing with him, leaving him out there. I don't know why his team didn't call it like. Verme- like and Vermeesh, he, the former yeah, world. Johnny Vermeesh. Uh, yeah, the world uh, gravel champion was with him and basically sitting on. So he had. Yeah. He had. He, he people, took some poles with him, and yeah. then you look back, and they've got three guys on the front too, and they're they're just like, all right, we can wear down Peterson this way, or whatever he might still have, even yeah. though he, he, you know. And at one point, Elfson wasn't even a world tour team, and when. You know, Matteo Vanderpool signed with them for a longer contract. A lot of people thought was there, he's nuts. His team isn't almost worthy of him. You know, but right. but they certainly have developed and stepped up too. Kind of like in a way with, with Sagan going to Bora and things like that too. Some total energy too. If they, a lot of times, if they have a superstar like that, they more people want to go there and race with you. Well, they took out Jasper Philipson, so that's two monuments, two different riders from Alphonson mm-hmm. to Koenig. Yeah. I mean. And and they they replaced him with Axel Lawrence, who's been riding really well, and he rode very well too. So they did everything pretty much right. And then the weather was worse than it has been in years with the rain, and Kalkenberg was super slippery. That was the most fun part of the race, I thought, to watch riders, you know, like it used to be in the old days, not yeah. be able to stay on the bike and have to climb. So I've, I've got the Kalkenberg the Spanish, behind behind yeah. me. The, the Spanish um, guy from who was it from Movistar was Cortina. He was off the front a little bit. Yeah. He, I, he oh, finally I saw a replay because all of a sudden he's on the side and he like like he's got a mechanical power, but he he like slid sideways, yeah. and then he lost his momentum and then he couldn't couldn't get it, going. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, the only three riders in, in the front, you know, made it over. Um, Vanderpool, of course, uh, in front, and Jorgensen so close, just. I mean, it looks different from the different ca- camera angles. You know, the head-on shot where you compress with the long lens, make oh, he's just there. But when you turn around, look the other way, oh, he's got to make up some space. But then Peterson was even further back. It's like all these gaps. And then to see how it all came in together at the finish with the the groups that had the sprinters and the and like like four UAE riders, and to, what the podium ended up was, you wouldn't have believed it because. Um, you would thought Alberto Bettio, who's been on great form. Oh, yeah, and really um, well. And a former winner. Yeah, with him and Dylan Toons. Those two, I thought, okay, that's, you know, second and third probably there. But, yeah. yeah it well, all... In the last kilometer, right? It was, it was really oh, close. Oh, no, within the last, like, 75 meters, maybe? Okay, yeah. 50 to 70. Yeah, it was very, very close at the end. Well, I thought, at first I thought, Mateo, okay, maybe I, maybe you'll get over. I don't Matteo Vanderpool is not a rider that would say, "Oh, I can work with this guy and then just drop him later." Now he, he he's like, "Okay, I can." He wouldn't do. I, that's what I was hoping. Okay, get, it was a long way to get up with him. Yeah, yeah 45k, and a couple of good climbs with the uh, Alta Quarter Mountain Paterberg, the the final attempts of those. But uh, yeah, Vanderpool is now in famous company. Oh. Kind of crash and burning, you know, bonked, I guess, or something. But in Magnus Sheffield, though. Yeah. Six, yeah right? American. It only, it only ends six, up six it's... because because yeah. Matthews got Michael relegated. Matthews. Yeah. Which uh, he cut it, he cut way across. I guess. I mean, technically, he, in the rules. I mean, uh, 
I, That's I thought a shame. Was still, I thought. I mean, I, I haven't looked at it real closely. I haven't, I haven't had time to analyze, but it looked like there was still room on the barriers for, to come through. You know, so it didn't seem to me like he. But he moved way across. You're supposed to stay at hold your line. Was that what they were saying? Why he was relegated? Because he, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he didn't close the door in Milan San Remo. Yeah, cost he him. held the line there. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, that's a pity because he rode a great race um, to be up there. But the um, the Italian, Luca Mozzato, is that his name, for our KS Hampson, getting second. I mean, they, I was oh, watching on Italian yeah. TV. They were, they were super excited. And then Margato, the, the uh, Portuguese rider, who's like 19, barely, maybe 20, barely, um, fifth, I think he was huge results so it'll be interesting to see how these younger riders like sheffield and Morgata, even even mateo jorgens at 24 i mean yeah. um, vanderpool's now 29 he's in his prime um well van Hart's you know around the same age so he's going to start hitting his 30s and he's not going to have as many opportunities to try to get those elusive monuments yeah mazato is also 26 so um but they were super stoked for a lot of reasons it was an italian who did well archaea bnb hotels who um, has struggled with getting results too. They were really excited too. It was a big, yeah, it was, I mean, you know, when you have a, a team that's not as highly ranked and, and they struggle in these kind of races and then doing really well, yeah. Yeah, know. podium is a big result. Huge, yeah, huge. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any other takes from Flanders? I mean, Vanderpool now. Well, next next time he can go for fourth and be the only one to have four wins, which which would be a yes. really big deal. I mean, the last four years he's been first, second, first. Every other year he's won. And yeah, he's, he's been done second six, in six times and won three times, mm-hmm. and he's never yeah. worse than fourth, I think. <laughs> so, he, yeah. I, yeah, I forget. I saw someone saying it's a matter of times. So I think it was Councilera was saying, you know. He'll break it for sure. It's just a matter of time. So, because this counselor is also a three-time winner too. So, yeah, I mean, and he I was think... feeding bottles. Was he? He was tutor writers. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a picture of him giving a bottle out. Yeah. He's he's full in for helping. Um, yeah, I mean, so Riley Sheehan was thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, he wrote a good ride. I saw him yeah. every time when I saw like, um, because a lot of writers and not a lot, but several small crashes, and when I'd see uh, Israel Premier Tech go down, so hope it's not Riley. <laughs> Well, he he won his small group sprint too, so there was like seven, six, seven guys together, and he he won that sprint. So, um, he's he's riding really well. So I think it's it's great to have Jorgensen be so prominent, and then when he wasn't there at the end, because you know he probably worked way too hard at the end to do what he had to do. But you have to, if you want a chance to win, you have to, have to do. It wasn't then like okay, all Americans are gone, you know. So yeah. I, I remember when when uh, Imperial Bay Frankie Andrea was on Museo's wheel one time. And Museo just rode away from everybody. <laughs> and Frankie Andrea was the only yeah. person to be able to stay on his wheel and stayed on it for quite a while. And then he got gapped and then finished a little further down. There was no other American to come up and, and be next there, you know. But in mm-hmm. this case, so Mateo Jorgensen tried to go, you know, again on the winner's wheel and wasn't able to do it. But then it wasn't like there was no one else there. It's like, you know, right. so Sheehan was there. And then, Mag- you know, Magnus Sheffield, who rode a pretty intelligent race, you know, following moves and stuff, had really strong, but didn't seem like he was putting nose in, out the window a whole lot either too and it paid off you know and he's like what 20 years old too or something like that 21 yeah uh, 21 yeah. yeah so for him to continue to do well like that that's great too so i i just thought it was it was it was great to have that and it was fun too i think you know to have a, a little bit more weather impacted flounders too so sure um you know well, the, you said. more more so i think it impacted the women do you think I didn't much see much of the women's race. I mean, SD Works wasn't even in the top three, right? And, no, and no. Uh, two These truck riders were. Yeah. Yeah. One, and Sharon Van Enroy, Cassini yeah. Wadawa second. <coughs> Chloe Dyger, you know, our, our hope friends. with the American. Chloe Dyger crashed three times. <laughs> oh, this year, really? Yeah. Yeah. Niodomo is, is still hasn't had, doesn't have a win since 2019, I think. So she's been doing really well. But um, yeah, she, but super they were saying she's super happy with that finish too, because shows she has really good form. And, and I think it's that race is good too, just cause I mean, I have nothing against SD works, but right. Right. But to see a dominant team not dominate is what, you know, yeah. Makes it also, interesting yeah. because you know, they're not going to just win everything. I mean, Lotto Kopecky was going for three in a row 
and she was, you know, the world champion on the women. You could have had two world champions winning, but yeah. I think that was another big deal for Vanderpool to win in in the rainbow stripes. Yeah, that, I think Peter Sagan in 2016 was the last person to do that. So, right. Yeah, and I think they said Demi Vollering. They've already announced that she won't be on SD Works next year. Yeah, so. I guess they didn't want to pay her the money that she deserves. So. Which is good to break up the top writers, I think, to give more competition and make it more exciting. But yeah. yeah. And I also, I think, too, I mean, a lot of Kofeki is a little bit more versatile and stepped up her climbing a little bit recently. So maybe they think she could be a Grand Tour impact rider. You know, but otherwise, you think that Volering is their Grand Tour rider more. And but yes, yeah, still can do well in Strata Bianchi and stuff too. So yeah, you know, they're so they're so versatile too. But um, I think they, they have so many figured, good riders. Yeah, I think they figured they could do. You know, they didn't have to pay her, so they may they might have said that we can't afford it. Yeah. But they, yeah. they're also saying basically that they can afford not to pay her. <laughs> yeah. So she wasn't their one rider. Yeah. So um, I didn't really see much of that race at all. I want I'm gonna, I want to watch it because Mariana Voss has been riding great. Right. She, she won, won Dorsdorf Flander and. The yeah, same day, Matthew Jorgensen. So two Visma Lisa bike riders winning on the same day, yeah. which they did, was, they did earlier. She was fourth in Flanders, and she was just won her small group sprint too at nine seconds. So um, I want to, I'm gonna, I, I kind of want to see the sprint a little bit too. And uh, I, you know, it really seemed like Ben Anroy was, uh, what you know, leading it out basically for Lago Borghini, and who's right. who's a previous flying winner. right now too. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's, she's a good sprinter. Yeah, she's doing great. But yeah, Pluck, well, Pluck Peters, though, it was her first shot Pluck at all PGC, these things. Yeah, yeah and Finn Van Empel was up there, too. And then Persico, who I, yeah. I don't want to say I made fun of her riding style before, but maybe I have. She seemed like she's wasn't always the best pack she's rider. Getting, she's getting more experience and getting better. Yeah. yeah. She's so strong that she makes up for maybe her lack of um, tactical savviness in the pack. And and just, yeah, and, she, and she's learning all the time, too, so. Yeah, there's a lot of impressive people that are, are doing well there. So, what was the what was the best American? I didn't look. Uh, Kristen Faulkner, 21st. 21st. Hmm. Yeah. So, well, in the group that was sprinting for 11th. So. I know, and of course, guess. Lorena Weebus won the sprint for that group too. Yeah. No surprise there. We we always a little time crunch, right? We always have lots lots of stuff to do. Um, yeah. I just wanted to look ahead a little bit to Perry Roubaix coming up, but the Junior men's junior Perry Roubaix, I think, is also going to be the same day. I think the women are race on Saturday, and the men on Sunday. I think they divide those up this weekend. But I think the junior race, the and, junior, <clears throat> the spars, and the uh, men are all on Sunday, the seventh. seventh Sunday, yeah. And the women is on the Saturday, Sixth, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. But but in the in the junior race, I've been following some of the results lately because I've seen an American doing well, and he's just. 16 Barry. Ashlyn Barry. Yeah, Do you know, you know about Ashlyn Barry? Oh yeah. Is that sure. yeah. or is that is that um, Michael D. D. Barry's? D. Yes, and D.D. Domain Barry's. Uh, uh, yeah. So two world class riders. And I was I was told a year or so ago, everybody was talking about Enzo Hincapi. Right, right, right. Yeah. And they both they both ride for the EF development team. But but at, at one point, I'm trying to think who it was that told me this, but they said no no no. Barry, Barry. yeah he's he's the next guy he's he's, okay, he's like yeah. he's he's a step well, above and and he's got dual citizenship u.s and canadian so um yeah he can well he won the stage race already um he crashes he a went, lot too but he won oh, yeah, yeah he, won, he wins anyway <laughs> he 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 won the I, don't, I thought it was a junior race but he won the youth classification so maybe because he's racing against like some 18 year olds, he's a 16 year old. At this this last race that he raced at Trixo Stern von South Limburg. So, all right, well, yeah, Ashley Barry would keep tracks on him. But let's see how he does it. At I the, think he's uh, racing for Perry US Bay. too, right? So he you know, he has dual citizenship. I think he races for US. So, and I think he might even live in North Carolina. I'm not, I'm not sure, but anyway, yeah. So, but Hincapie is 15, I think, too. So Enzo's right, a little bit younger yeah. yet. Right, yeah, so Barry so. can race some races that Enzo can't race, and so yeah, it's it's so. Uh, so actually, you know, we've got Nielsen Paulus, who unfortunately with his injury, I mean, after last year and last couple of years, has been so strong. He's in his upper twenties, um, and then you've got 
of course, Matteo Jorgensen is 24, so in his mid 20s, and you got like the Magda Sheffield, and well, okay, I've um, got to put in Brandon McNulty, of course. He's he's uh like right between Jorgensen and and um, Nielsen Paulus. So so, and then you go down a little bit younger, you know, like the Magda Sheffield and even Matthew Richard Kelly and. And then these guys coming up. So actually, we've got a really nice spread of a lot of big, talented riders to to get results and and give us Americans some someone to cheer for coming up for for many years to come. Yeah, it's interesting too because I heard the announcers at one of the races saying the depth. They actually said USA Cycling is doing so well, and not not saying like the organization USA Cycling, but I think yeah. Cycling USA is doing well. But it, yeah, in 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 a lot of ways, USA Cycling the organization is really having some challenging times. Races are, you know, Joe Martin got canceled. Uh, uh, you know, no. they say po- I get the email postponed till next year, but that's, they postponed the tour of California too until yeah. next year. And that's never happened again. Yeah. And it was weird too, because Joe Martin picked to move their day, their race dates to Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And then, a lot later than usual. Yeah. And then they ended up saying that was an issue. <laughs> they picked the actual date and it was an issue. So, um, yeah, but then also too, just as an organization, USC Cycling, and, and Jim Miller runs the athletic part of it, and he's been doing this forever. You know, he's been he was there, and then he went to I think Carmichael, and then came back, and so he's he's kind of like holding the elite level stuff together. But I'm a little surprised, even because their junior development has been uh, had some challenges as well too. So I mean, Lux is gone. Uh, EF now has kind of stepped up as being the the big junior team, but there's not as much of a pipeline as we'd like there to be. Hot tubes is Hot Tubes still around? Yeah, Hot Tubes is still, I think still doing. There's, um, and there's like st- something Star Racing in New York too that's that has a good program too. And so yeah, but there's some programs, but but as as far as an organization, U.S. Cycling is not doing a good job with having a good pipeline race wise, you know, in the United States. Yeah. But yeah, somehow. But they, yeah, because really they keep going racers. to Europe. Yeah, they I go know, to right? Europe. Yeah, and find their way. And maybe we're just at the point too, where like you know, with Barry and with um, you know, Hincapie, they're 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 children of star racers, and they're just getting to that age now that they're able to to race well, and they, the genes, you know, they've got super super good genes. So um, yeah, maybe it's just a natural progression, and they and they have the culture, and you know, and and some of these kids again are coming from South Carolina, where where George Hincapie and Christian Vandeveld and Bobby Julek are there helping to shape some of their futures and stuff too and yeah so it, it's it's i think it's less the culture of america but more specific situations but it, it's happening right and and you right. know except it was except came from durango devo and um who else came from it, so there are some good devo programs there's durango like devo simmons programs. i saw colby simmons. simmons got a podium too his brother yeah. he writes for visma lisa, lisa by the development team so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Yeah, oh, somehow we're piecing it together and getting good, you know, and and right. and Taylor, wins. Your, big your wins, son's going to yeah. do a, a a camp for junior development camp out in San Diego coming up, and I'm so yeah, and actually USA Cycling is promoting that. I'll give them credit for that for sure. So he, he was he was frustrated that they weren't doing a good job promoting it, but lately I've seen a bunch of Facebook posts and stuff promoting it. So yeah, there's there's some stuff happening, but it's great that there's even in trying times good riders coming through, and like you said, there's so many that. Anyway, AJ, right? We we haven't mentioned him. I'm not sure what he's doing right now. AJ but, August. Yeah, he's riding for Enios. Yeah, so he's you know in, in the pipeline too, and he's he's like what 18, 19. So yeah, there's reason for us to be optimistic for sure. Yeah, yeah. As I think it's always more exciting to watch when there's an American. The oh, well. sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I just uh, also, look, 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 I'm Barry too. So he, he, the one, you know, the, the one he just was first in the youth classification, fourth in the GC. The one just before that, it was in the, the tour of Bukaja de Elmeray, yeah. something. Right. He was, he won the youth classification and the GC yeah, classification. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, and then before that, Valley of Sun here in the United States, but he won the GC in that one too. So, um, yeah. So it, it's not, not just one race he's been doing well. Yeah. In too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the other team, like uh, I think I mentioned that Paul Lapiria, I didn't say his name, that they've got some good young riders coming up for Decathlon Azure oh. Le Mondial because um, I have a friend, 
that I've mentioned many times, Thomas, who is a doctor for the team there. And so I feel a little connection to them. And so I'm always happy to see when, when they do well. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, so they actually early in the he, season. He's uh, 23. Yeah. Yeah. Winner, yeah, winner's today's stage. Right, they've got those twins parent. They got too many writers, so I can't pronounce their names very well at all. Mm -hmm. the, the parent, pen, Penette, Perrier, or the, the the twin brothers, you know, the and, parent. And, yeah. And, and, um, yeah. Anyway, they they've done well this year and getting a lot of points, and you know, it's all about staying in the world tours <laughs> and their French oh, team sure. that's been around for a long time. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think Gordon, 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 Dorian Gordon, he was second to Teddy on the, on the final stage. Uh, you're frozen again. Oh, you're not frozen for me though. No. Can you hear me? No. I can hear you. This is not. You just, but you have a good face at least being frozen. <laughs> you got like a little bit of a smile. Okay. Godon was the best of the rest in the last stage of the Catalonia behind Teddy Bogaccia that kept waiting to see if he would break away and get some pictures of him climbing up, but he was trying to get his teammates to win that day and it didn't work out. <laughs> so, of so, course he had to, so he had to win then in the sprint in the end. Yeah. You see the EF had a win too uh, today. Yeah, I just That's saw yesterday. That, yeah. yeah. They, they need all the teams, well, you know, everybody's looking for points so anytime right. that's like, like like i was saying decathlon looking for their point getting yeah. points and ef getting some points somewhere yeah no you got to be savvy and, and get the points when you can to to stay at that high level speaking of which cavendish who was supposed to be getting points at some of these smaller races not smaller but you know maybe not the the, the big world you know um monuments he's been sick <laughs> and hasn't been racing he did he did do a, a, an amateur race though i'm not sure how that worked out but he did oh, a race and Isle of Man, right? Yeah, Wasn't he back he's, where he's from? No, yeah. he, he he finished top 20th or something. Or yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He's going to go do the Tour of Turkey, though. And, and he's had a lot of success in the Tour of Turkey. Last time he won three or four stages of the Tour, he won four stages, I think, of the Tour of Turkey that year. So I think they're hoping that he gets healthy and can get his mojo back in that race. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Because we could talk all night about what's all going on. <laughs> I don't have any other predictions than Mateo Van Der Poel um, doing the double, winning oh, again. Jeez. But it's a race that a lot of things can happen. Yes. Yep. So. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, it's, you know, with Wout out, um, it definitely ch changes things for Ms. Melissa Bike. And, and Peterson and, being, yeah, Peterson being, you know, not 100% because of injury. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how much he's hurt, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's it's a race that a lot can happen for sure. Uh, it's hard, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, this spike. I mean, so sure. they, 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 you know, Dillman, Dillman Barl, right? I mean, he's yeah. And then Christopher Christoph Laporte has not been quite at his best. I he's think, been but, sick. Yeah. So, um, but either one of those could win. Uh, Jorgensen might be too long right now for him, but, but who knows? You know, I mean, he's definitely getting better all the time. So they still have things, you know. And Betiol's riding great right now. And you know, you just you don't know. I mean, yeah. if, if the right it set was of crazy, the race happened. that Matteo Jorgensen won, Dwarves are a founder, and he was off the front, looked like he would win, and then he he cramped up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, lots of things can happen. Yes, I I guess we want to make it. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> you know, if, if, if I'm guessing the announcers for every time the Pistons play <laughs> want to give some hope that they'll win their 13th basketball game, <laughs> so the year. They're on record for their worst team ever, but they probably you know you have to make it exciting because you think well you never know what could happen maybe they can win today, so you know maybe we think that Matteo Vanderpool won't win, but uh, yeah he's he's got to be the overwhelming thing the only five star yeah. favorite probably yeah. everybody else is a four star or lower, and a worthy champion. Yeah, and the thing is who right he's he's yeah I mean it's kind of like I guess Merck's won even more dominating fashion, but when he showed up for races I, yeah he had to be five star favorite at every single event he ever did you know and he. Right. Came through at fifty percent of them. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All Oliver right. Nason, he won. Nason, yeah, yeah. He won Milan San Remo. He won Perry Ray. He won. What did he win? He won with a big one. He did. Uh, Oliver Nason. Milan San Remo. No, second of Milan San Remo. Okay, I'm sorry. Second. Yeah. Right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But people like that, though. I mean, he's got the pedigree behind him. If he had his. Well, Niels Pollard was second. Yeah. 
I yeah, remember last year John Dayton called was like in the Oh the, right, and he's former winner. And yeah. they got knocked up knocked out to the yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. Nathan real quick, he was seventh at, at, at Flanders. You know, so you think yeah. like if he had his yeah. dream day, he could win Perry Bay. All right. It's birthdays. Great to talk birthdays. To you. Oh, birthdays. Oh, I forgot about I'm raising. Yeah. So ready to wrap this up and it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a interesting it's a Bill Antos's birthday today. Oh good. Excellent. He's not a cyclist at all. I don't think I've ever seen him ride a bike, but he's a good yeah. friend of mine growing up in Niles. Yeah. So birthday list. Wow. List. I'm I'm rusty. Oh, uh, Bjarni Reese, 60 years old today. So check, checkered past in yeah. multiple ways, but as not only being a Tour de France winner, I think he still has the jersey because it was too too many years past when he wanted to turn it in. I think he gave it back, but he also is you know had CSC yeah, for, running the team. He was yeah. Uh, and, and he resurrected a lot of careers, you know, and I think, I think he's, there was a, there was a movie that, that about him and he's a very emotional person and the swan. Oh, they used to do like, um, military style activities training. at their training camp. Training. So he, yeah. he was injecting different, um, techniques in that to help motivate yeah. it and get the I most out of the riders. They jumped into icy water in, in, in scuba gear or something like that, or it was something crazy like that too. So, so, um, but he's, so he, uh, he's in interesting person who yeah. has a lot of good ideas so we recognize him for sure he, he, he was again right but now we got someone that's 86 today a dutchman yeah. dutchman he's yeah. second best on the list boss millipard yeah so he was the points jersey winner at the vuelta España back yeah. in yeah. 1963 and he won a he stage stage yeah yeah second twice in the stages of the tour de france Wow, seconds. Yeah, that must have been tough. Second in the national championships, too. Yeah. So, it did one win stage races. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Anybody else interesting? Uh, the, the first active rider is Mark Donovan. He's a Brit, 25 years old. Yeah, not too many active. Um, First American I saw with Catherine Kelter. Yeah. 31. Happy birthday. No longer racing. No. Yeah, I think we're going to be quick to wrap up the birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. All right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully we'll get to talk again sooner than between last time. You got more stuff coming up with the camps and that's super busy time for you this spring, but we'll, we'll work it in when we can. Yeah. I think we, you know, I, I might have sometime Monday or Tuesday uh, next week before I leave for another camp. So, yeah. Get some Perry Roubaix commentary, probably. All right. All right. Well, talk to you again soon. Thanks. Thanks, Dean. Bye. Now.